What is going on everyone, Commodore Lass here today, bringing to my live reaction of that Haikyuu Haipu manga chapter 346. Now, the chapters just come out for uh, Weekly Show and Jump, you know, shout out to the Viz, of course, for providing chapters week in and week out, because they are doing God's work as they should be. And you're probably surprised, because, you know, normally I would upload my videos and stuff late in the night time, but I have a day off finally on a Sunday for once. Uh, of course, you know, Easter Sunday, for those of you guys celebrating Easter, happy Easter, of course. I just finished up having like a late lunch with family. Uh, everyone's upstairs getting ready to watch the Leafs game, or I think it's already done the first period, so it's a little quiet right now, thankfully. But uh, I have some time to read some haikus, so I'm just letting you guys know, if you hear, for whatever reason, the background, like noise and yelling and stuff, it's game six, they have a chance to beat the Boston Bruins, a chance to go into the next round. <sighs> I would love for it to happen, so yeah, that's that. But if you hear like any background noise and stuff, you know, that's probably the case, or my parents already read the chapter for Haikyuu, because uh, I know my dad's a fan of Karasuno, my mom's a fan of Kamala Dai. So her side's winning right now uh, after the first set was concluded. But I kind of want Kamala Dai still to win. I want them to get the sweep so that way we can get them to come back. Uh, Karasuno, you know, in the next year, get that revenge game, which means, you know, we have a little bit more longer of a story to, you know, experience. So that's what I want in my mind, but in my heart, I don't want it to happen, but we need it for the story. So without further ado, let's get into the chapter. Let's see exactly what's going on this week. The Haikyuu Haipu, and I believe this is the week we're also getting a color page as well. I made a mistake, I think, in the last video. I said that uh, we we're supposed to get it that week, we didn't, but I think it's this week we're supposed to be getting the color page. So let's see what Fedorate Sensei has for us, man. Let's get it. All right. Hi, ever wait. Hi, everyone. Thanks so, so much for all your votes in the Haikyuu best game poll. Oh, yeah, because I remember. I forgot who was it. It was my man TLG or the Haikyuu official, um, the news account and stuff on Twitter. Because they were doing a thing for like the best matches in Haikyuu and stuff. Did it, uh, yo, did Eng did they give us the, the option for the English release though? Because I don't remember doing a uh, voting for it though. But yo, we're about to get the stuff from Japan at least though. Let's see. Thanks very much for your votes in Haikyuu best game poll. We tallied them and now it's up to, time to announce the results. Let's start with 10th to 4th place. Alright, this is going to be interesting. What the heck? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me see. Let me zoom in on this, because there's no way what I'm seeing here is actually legit. 10th place goes to Nekama and uh, Nohibe, right? That was the match that we saw like in the uh, qualifiers. 9th place is the Owl versus the Cast 3 on 3 during the train cam. 8th place was Karasuno and Alba Josai. The first match? I have it a little bit higher than that. Fukurodani and Mujinazaka at 7th place. It's tough because I need to see how the anime is going to adapt it. I felt it was a good match itself, but I can't complain from where it's being ranked. Shiratori Zawa versus Alba Josai. Sixth place. And then fifth place, you have Fukurodani versus Nekama. And then Karasuno and Inarazaki in fourth? I don't know if I can agree with that. Because in my opinion, like, outside from the anime with Shiratori Zawa, that's the best match in the series. Quality-wise, that's the best match. I don't agree with what the, the fan base in Japan is saying right now. That's wild. So now I'm curious to see what they're going to put in the top three. Because that means Karsu and Nekama, the Shirt Horizontal match is going to be in there. Maybe the second Alba Josai match. But it's like, I can't agree with that, man. Inarazaki was, without question, the absolute best match we got in the entire series. No way. And even the boys, even the Mia twins are like, what the hell? What the heck? We're down in fourth place. You're kidding. Fourth place is just as bad as like 100th place. That's facts. Y'all deserve first place. I don't agree with it. Oh, oh three of our games have made it. See Boku so bad. <laughs> See Kuro right here. The Cappers of the Crows and Honorable Mench only got one vote. Better not be for the most the most recent match. Because I would loo I would fight every person in the fan base if they did that to uh, to, to that matchup. No way in the world you can do that. It better be for the uh the training match. Uh that wasn't a volleyball game, you know, that was a real life eater. Oh, <laughs> Okay, I was about to say, I was about, yo, I was to say, yo, if these sickles put that game in the Nationals, in Inter High, at least with one vote, I would have lost my mind. Thank God. You see, first through, first through third place are on the next page. All right. Let's see exactly what we got to see, man. Okay, all right. So, let me go. So, third place with 4,552 votes. Of uh, the spring spring tournament uh, quarterfinals, we have Karasuno versus Shiratori Zawa. Second place is Karasuno versus Alba Josai, which is the semifinals, so this, the second matchup they had. And first place is Karasuno versus Nekoma, 
with 8,011 votes. I gotta remember what the hell I did for my thing because I said Inarizaki was number one. I said Shira Torizawa was number two. I think Nekoman was number three for me. Abujo side two was four, and then the first Abujo side matchup was my number five. So Nekoman being the top three and Shira Torizawa being the top three, I'm happy with that. But Inarizaki without question should have been the number one match, in my opinion. Like when it comes to the best antagonist team, the antagonist team that we had so far in terms, just a matchup in general. The runners up of Inter High, not even making the top three. I mean, granted, they made top five, but it's like not even top three. I don't agree with that, honestly. But again, at least two of my picks still remain in the top three, so I can't really be upset about that. And uh, a lot of respect on the second uh, Alba Joe side match because that revenge game was brilliant. But I don't know. I, I still don't agree with Inarizaki getting the placement it did, but I can't complain with that too much. But anyways, let's see the chapter itself. Chapter three hundred forty six expectation. So. Get ready for the second set. How are they going to hold things down? You see Kuro and then see Kemba right here. Whoa. Well, heck, they actually pulled it off. <sighs> you see them? Oh, oh, oh Fugger and Donnie. Wait, so they're seeing their matchup? Hold on. So that's the conclusion of their matchup. Ah, hmm. Wait, because the matchup... Wait. Was... I'm trying to remember. Was Carson's matchup starting up before theirs at the time? No, because they, they finished the match. I'm pretty certain when they finished the matchup, that's when we afterwards got Car with the beginning of Carson and the uh, Kalama Dai, though. And we're switching over now. It goes, shows the score afterwards. 25-20 to 20 for uh, Kalama Dai against uh, Carson. But it looks like they wound up dropping their first set. Hold on. Yeah, so they switch over. They see that. And you see all of them afterwards looking on, just annoyed from the first set. Uh, we're a team that gets better as the game goes on, too. And they still came back and took the two sec two, the second to... The second two, two sets off of us. Can you not remind me, please? <laughs> and so Kamamadai comes with set, away with set one. From the start, their blocking was operating at a high level, while Ace Hoshimi was in rare form. On the other hand, it seemed like Karasuna wasn't quite uh, firing on all cylinders as all sets. Oh yes, definitely. Their serving in particular wasn't at the level we've seen, but we've seen it before. Not only that, Kamamadai has so far successfully adapted their blocking to Karasuna's very arsenals of attacks. I hope to see Carson stay aggressive and keep battling to find cracks in Kamamadai's defense. The first set of a game is a crucial one. Yes. <laughs> Yachi's like, yo, oh, oh, what if we lose? And she's remembering the conversation with uh, Bokuto from before. You shouldn't think about downer stuff like that. It really puts a damper on things. Of oh, course, side, so they're switching up now. Ah, another game to full sets. You know, looking on. <laughs> Stacey would come in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? Thinking about set three already? The gung-ho to go... The gung-ho to go on out there and win set two, huh? Heck, acting like we practically won it already. No, I didn't mean it like... No, stop. Please don't... don't please don't. Anything but... You sound just like Hinata. Yo, he's starting to turn. I don't know if you can say it's a full face turn. Because even though I do feel like, you know, he went from... Um, from heel to face, you know, in terms of his character, but uh, a true face turn, he starts acting like, you know, and he's like, oh, I'm so depressed. He's like, excuse me? Rude. <laughs> hey, put respect on my boy. Gao, that was a really nice block there at the end. Well done. Really? Wow, thanks. I guess I'm just that good, huh? I mean, the damn Yao Ming height you got, of course, you good. I mean, you got the skill, but man, when you have the height, though, it really comes into play. Though that was really a fun squawk. You made when you realize you bit hard on Shoyo Hinata's decoy. And then the fact that he jumped up like, yo. He still gets me, man. How he was, he literally, I can't wait to see how the anime is going to do it. It's going to be him coming down and him rising back up like a dragon, man. Still, that sliding jump he made was a big surprise. I felt, almost fell for it uh, myself. Yeah, that sure was a shock. Dude, that six foot two, uh, that's six foot too many inches Goliath guy is freaking scary. Yeah, he only has he only has to make a little hop to get his hands up that far. Oh, hold it! No inventing vague reasons to scare yourselves. Yeah, if we'd said that had last hit over a little bit, it would have scored. Don't get started on what could have should have stuff. You'll never stop. No, that's not what I meant. That's not what I mean. He's saying attacking from the sl same slot is too risky. Oh, we've done the back row attacker hides behind the front row guy and pops out. That's a long name. I forget that. that's how, that's the name that they came up with. Kind of thing here. And it usually mean, meant for a score 
a score for us, but this time it didn't work. That's because we're facing a guy who can jump twice and still be, still be in time to block. From where he's standing, he was probably like, wow, thanks for staying in the same slot where I can't reach. That's how it went, right? Yeah, we're going to have to pay more attention to not just the speed of the attack, but it's width now too. Yep, exactly. That last block was a splash of cold water, yeah? But once you figure out how and why they got us, it's not so scary. Common with the ice blockers are good. It'd be ideal if we could split them up and peel them off. Our attackers, but off our attackers, but it's not that easy. However, they aren't robots. They're human just like us. Use plays that have lots of attackers coming from lots of directions. Give their blockers too much information to process. You'll start stressing them out, tiring them, and that will lead to mistakes. There are times when you feel helpless. No matter what you do, it has no effect. That gets you wondering if you, if what you're doing has any points at all, right? But for this game, at least today. That is not the case. You are doing something. You see, again, the resolve coming back to them a little bit. So, we can't let set 2 be a repeat of set 1. This time, let's... You see, you die there. It's Tsukishima-san. You were kind, of, you were kind of enough to say that Hoshimi's play reminds you of mine. But he's much better than I ever was. And I love he's actually saying that now, too. Because it's like, yo, Hoshimi might be the truth. Take that last hit where he aimed for the end line. If I'd be in his shoes, I would have hit that down instead of back, and then Keikun would have blocked me. Hoshiyumi was far has far better skill in decision making than I ever did. And even though the Hoshiyumi kid is super good and super skilled, he took he took one look at Kei's blocking was like, man, I gotta avoid that guy. Good point. <laughs> he's saying he's coming with the facts. He's like, yo, you know what you're talking about? She's watching enough of these games to know what's going on. What? They're so switching over now. Going back to the coaches and stuff, it's common to point out someone's mistake and say that's wrong. But what seems to be far less common is pointing out when someone is doing something right and saying that's correct. You wouldn't think anything needs to be said because they're doing the right thing, but the person doing it isn't necessarily confident it's correct. I think it's rather important to speak up and tell them, yes, you're doing the right thing. To so you, you kind of watching on, man, to think the day would come where I get a compliment from a high school teacher. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, set two is about to get underway. Will Kamamadai ride their momentum, or will Karasuno find some way to swing things in their favor? Hmm? Wait! Hold on, I, I thought Alni was at the game and stuff. I was going to be like, what the hell did you get there that fast? No, well, he's like watching on. Interesting. Kamamadai has spun the rotation a few ticks. So, okay, so what we're seeing right now, so it's Hakuba on the left. In the back, you see Hirogami and Hoshiyumi. And then in the front, you got Nozawa, Beisho, and then Suwa. I wonder why. It has to be some sort of tactic, right? Against Carson was serving, maybe, or against Hinata. Nope. What I'm thinking is that this isn't some tactic to beef up the defense. They decided to boost their offense instead. When Carson was a setter and Glasses guy up front, that rotation is when they got the least firepower on offense. Well, that's kind of true, though. You see, like, Tanaka and them in the back and everything. Though that's when their, blo their blocking is the strongest. In set one, that's when Kamal and I switched up their defensive strategy and lined up in a stacked block to beef their defense and pick up on Carson's left. <laughs> this is the panel from before. Hi, did you see us? We're marking you. Overall, that particular rotation is Carson's low point. As you see, Sawamura, Nishinoya, and Tanaka in the back, and in the front, you got Azumane, Sugishima, and uh, Kageyama. From set two, Kamal and I probably decided to switch up the rotation so they could take advantage of that low point. I'm betting the man. Uh, the main point is having their own shorty rotating into the server slot right then. From what I've seen, he's the nastiest server. Not only that, when Hoshimi is, up, is, set, is up to serve, they'll have Hirogami the immovable and their own Goliath in the front row. See, it's such as over there too, man. That's that's wild. And right when Karasuno's offense is at its lowest point, Kamamodai will have its strongest offensive rotation and try to grab back-to-back -back points. Now, what's Karasuno doing? It looks like they're staying with the, C, the, the S1 star where they had it in set one. An S1 start is when the setter begins in the back row in the server position. Okay, I got you. So, S so I always get to figure out like S1, like, you know, season one, season two kind of thing. So, at least to clarify that. S1 started when they had set one. No, wait a minute. What the hell? Wow, would you look at that? They flopped Suki in the shorty. So, from what we're seeing here, Kageyama's in the back. Hinata and Noya mixes in the, other, in the back side. And on the right side of that is Azumane. And then in the front, you have Tanaka, Tsukishima, and Sawamura. Interesting. Oh, hey, they've always started with number 10 out first before, but this time it looks like they'll have Mr. Tall Glasses out instead. So, Kageyama, server up. 
<laughs> you see you kind of like watching on like, huh? Like, I'm going to let things go according to their plan. <laughs> you see the coach of the other team? He's like, yo, I got you in my bag. But you're kind of like, nah, man, I'm not going to let that happen. Everybody knows uh, you can't defend every inch of the court. You're going to have strong points and weak points. In the same way, you're going to have to have high points and low points in your rotation. What do you bolster? What do you abandon? On your toes. We stop, uh, we stop them one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And here we go. The Spring Tournament quarterfinals. Carson versus Kawa Madai. Set two has just begun. Carson will set Kageyama is up to serve. So, uh, that all means what? It just means Kageyama season! Let's go! Right away, we get the first hit. Comes down, spikes right towards Hoshiumi. And he's like, nah, fella. We coming with the heat. Let's go. But at the same time, I need those guys to get the sweep, man. For the sake of longevity, I need it. But look, when Kageyama gets this hype, we gotta give it to him, man. And you see the crowd going in. Yeah, good sir. Back him up. Kawa Madai decided that they wanted to have their best rotation come up right when Karasuna was in their weakest offensive rotation. But Karasuna switched things up a little too. And that same, same exact same rotation that used to be their weakest, they decided to bring out their big gun. Shoyo Hinata. Yo, that's the end of the chapter. And it says April 26th, which I'm assuming that's going to be for Friday. So we're going to get an early chapter uh, coming up this week, which, you know, very good for me because then again, I'll be on time and stuff. And then after that, we'll be back to uh, covering late at night. But yo, good chapter though this week. Again, aside from the whole, like, um, the pop, like, basically, you know, the best match poll and stuff because I'll probably have, like, my own updated, like, you know, best matches in Haikyuu and stuff. So you guys kind of hear my thoughts on why I enjoy certain matches, you know, the way that I do. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the way Japan kind of decided that. And I'm kind of disappointed in the fact that for the English side, we didn't get to actually like have some input in the voting. Because um, I know for a fact that on the um, on the unofficial uh, Haikyuu uh, uh, Twitter accounts and stuff, they put up like a, like a poll and stuff saying like, you know, which match you guys think was the best. And because, you know, Viz didn't actually provide like a thing for that. So I kind of do hope they end up doing that afterwards. And, you know, maybe one for the popularity poll again that we get like, you know, later on down the line. Which I think would be nice if they can do that. And maybe we get to see from the English perspective, you know, what... Not just the characters, but the matches too, what we get to see as well. But this very good chapter here. I mean, again, the fact that we got the little giant pretty much saying that, you know... The player that he sees right now in Hoshiyumi is clearly a whole different level in comparison to what he was back in the day. Like, he says straight up, if I went for the, you know, for the attack to go straight after we're, uh, you know, go for the attack and stuff, right? Tsukishima was right there to stop him. There was no way he could do anything. But because... Hoshiyumi went for the back and stuff instead. That's how he was able to get him. And that's something that's, you know, uh, Lil Giant wasn't able to pull off. Like, he couldn't do that. It shows, like, you know, the difference in skill between the two of them. Uh, around that, like, the, you know, the age and stuff between the two of them. But getting to see that. And then on the switch up and stuff. Because now it's like Hoshiyumi, like, his guys in Kamamadai, they're going to be playing a very offensive style uh, coming up into this game. Because they know now, like, let's say based on like the switches and rotations and stuff, it's going to lead to opportunities for, you know, back-to-back -back points afterwards. You know, when Hakuba ends up going to the front after, uh, their main offensive guys are coming from the back and stuff, and that's going to be where a lot of the more dangerous attacks are going to start coming in afterwards. So, they got all that figured out. Carson has their own thing coming in, but once that works out after, and Hinata comes into play, that could be what switches it up. So, it'll be very curious to see whether or not this ends up working out. Because right now, it's like, you know, they were in their weakest offensive rotation, you know, to start off. But once they switch things up after that, they bring on Hinata and that ends up becoming like, you know, a bit of a game changer for them. So, that's going to be interesting, man. Especially the way we just saw right now. Kageyama just went in and just gave, uh, he just gave Osuyumi a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit of a revenge game. Even though, you know, it's still early on right now. But he sent, he sent a statement. He's like, nah, man, just because you guys won that first set, don't think you have the momentum. We're still here, man. So, very good chapter this week. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about the whole, like, you know, best match poll and stuff. What do you consider to be, uh, if you can't think of, like, your top 10, think of, like, maybe your top 5 matches in all of Haikyuu, you know, anime, manga, if you want to just put the manga, if you want to put the anime only, you know, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and I, I'm, you know what, because after this, I may have to really consider making my own, like, you know, best match poll video and stuff, you know, just talk about, like, the matches in Haikyuu and, like, you know, why I rank certain matches higher than another, but... That'll be a bit for another time and such. But uh, again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. Let me know down in the comments. Team Karasuno, Team Kamamadai, your best matches, all the good stuff. 
And I will catch you guys this Friday for chapter 347, and we'll see the second set commence and whether or not we're about to witness a sweep for Kamamadai over Karasuno, or we're about to see the second set go to Karasuno's side, and then everything just comes down to the final set, which will probably be giving me uh, post-traumatic stress disorder on a weekly basis, because it's like, I want the longevity of the series, but at the same time, I want Karasuno to prosper. But I value the longevity because once we get them to prosper, it'll be more rewarding. So, until next time, guys, we'll catch you guys on Friday for more of that Haikyuu Haipu. So, Commodore Last signing off. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care. Going crazy, yeah,